Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with something really interesting today for the channel. We've got a brand new game engine. This is the Manu Video Game Maker. Uh, the entire idea behind this is it's part of that whole no-code movement. You do not need to be a programmer to use this guy. And it is very early on. In fact, this one is just releasing as an alpha in a couple of days time. You can go and register on their site. We'll get to that later on. Uh, but basically this is kind of an early peek at where the game engine is going to be. So there's a ton of features and functionalities that are not there yet, but you can get the idea of where they're going with this engine, the approach they're going to be taking, and the performance you're going to get, and that kind of stuff from what we can see today. So this here is Manu, M-A-N-U. Uh, the entire idea behind it right now is it's optimized towards creating platform style games. With time, they're going to add new, new features and functionality, but ultimately the way it works is a collection of triggers and animations, basically. Those things work together. You compose your scene out of, um, you can bring in 3D objects, so you can bring in things like FBX files, uh, OBJ files, uh, Collada files, and so on. You drop them in the scene, they, their animation features and functionalities are supported, their texture stuff should just work. Um, and then you start kind of defining your game world as a result. So you go through here, um, so this is a simple um, platforming style game. We'll actually run it in just a second, we see. It's got all these various different triggers that fire off certain events, so that's a trigger that's a trigger and then we're going to go through we're going to see things like uh environmental traps like that guy right there this this um chain hopefully i'll be able to get to it in the uh in the uh game so that you have an idea what's going on but that is composed of this is the mace so the mace is available over here there is the mace you see the mace is built out of a number of different links and then we've got the uh trigger that handles the attack on it and you'd use that trigger to, to say that oh, a hit occurred you see over here we've got physics properties that we got material details that we can add for different things i'll explain that one back down later on all right so let's just minimize that window now and then we'll head on back so that was again our character is over here in a spawner oops went too far so there is our main character right there you see up here we've got the main character available spawner creates a new um, game entity of type trigger. Now in terms of types of things, we go into the library, you see we've got basic primitives to work from, uh, but we've also got lights, game objects, and then um, sound. So game objects is mostly how you would define your, your trigger shapes that you're gonna run into. Uh, and then they can trigger off various different animations and so on, but there's your idea. And then finally, you just got a simple menu over here, not a lot to it, you can hide the UI. Uh, we've got the ability to change the camera's perspective. Uh, we can have the physics colliders shown or not shown, and we can also uh, have statistics shown or not shown to so see the details of what's going on with the draw. It is using OpenGL 3. I guess I should mention that right off the hop too. Uh, this is available for Windows and Mac. I believe Linux is in the cards, but there is no ETA as of yet. Um, but that is where we're at. So right now you can run this on Windows and Mac OS, at least the early alpha version of it. And now it's going to go ahead and hit play. So this will run your game. Right now you can't create an executable, but you can share your works uh, with other people that are running Manu, at least for now. Uh, so this is compiling it. Give it a second. So here is our game in action. I'm going to use the arrow keys to run it. Uh, when we select the character, there's all those properties we can do for controlling, you know, run speed and so on. So there we got there we go. So now I'm going to wall jump up this guy. So all of the optimizations and everything are defined and set up for uh, platforming style games for now, but they do intend to support other genres. So there is the mace. I died anyways, but we should... Oh, it started me back at the beginning. Anyways, you saw the mace in action. The mace has collisions around it. Those collisions will trigger uh, triggers, which is kind of a weird choice of word. So let me see if I can get by and get killed by the mace instead. All right. So there I go ahead and run. Wall jump, wall jump, wall jump. So you don't have the fine-tune control over a lot. So if you don't like the way the movement works, you're kind of stuck with it for now. But here, let's go ahead and... Ah, so there I died, and now I spawn back at that location there. And that would be controlled by a trigger as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of there. Uh, oh, no, that's reload. So what I want to do is switch back. So we've got uh, the three different modes. Basically, we have our game-playing mode. Over here, we have the setup mode, where you start adding entities into your world. So again, we could we could just drop a light into our world. See, it just created the light object right there. Or we could just start creating um, objects in the world. So there, we, we just created a sphere, I think. Yeah, it's right, woo, come on back, come on back, come on back, right there. So there's a sphere we just created in the world. And now that it's defined, I can come in here and we can, we can add a texture to it. We can change things up. We can change the color of it, for example. Like so, and then, you know, you can also define the physics on it. So I can say, yes, this is a, a rigid body and have it do whatever. Um, 
and set a collider on it and set some properties for it as well. So that guy will literally just drop when the world starts. But you see there are some basic settings. They're going to change based off the type of entity that you have defined. So you see this one, this trigger is literally just uh, got a transform box in. So it is used to control logic. you got your straightforward movement options up here. And then over here is animation mode. So you've got... Um, triggers and animation are basically the two things that work together to create your game. Obviously, you know, complicated style games are, aren't really available. So you're not going to be making an RPG with an inventory system or anything like that with this. Uh, it'd be interesting to see where they evolve it towards. But again, they're trying to stick it more towards so an artist can jump in and just get going with this guy. So now you see here, uh, we've switched out instead of the objects, we now have the animations list. So here is like the mace swinging. And we, we ran into the mace before. Uh, so remember, it had all those different links that made up its controls. Well, these ones are keyframed. So you see here, links are, there's a rotation X keyframe going through. So we could add new keys in it. So if I clicked here, we can create a new key. And then we can set the um, the type of it, the, the, the transition type of it, like so. And we can set the actual value of it right there. So that's controlling the animation there. But on top of that, there's also things like um, speaker. Uh, there's a sound object that's being emitted with it as well. So this trigger... Or sorry, this animation, this uh, mace swing, is um, firing off all these animations plus this sound. So if I hit play here, and then turn it up a bit so you can actually hear it. Here, let's pick one with a more prominent thing. So here's where character running. Character running has a sound attached to it. There you go. So that is... That is the trigger off of when the character dies, for example, or moves into a, a trap of some kind. And that's kind of the way the game logic is being done. You've got these animations, they link together things in the scene, um, in this graph down here, and they are controlled via triggers. So you've got here, for example, the trigger linking here, and you've got various different trigger options. So you can have it uh, when the scene launches, when a collision started, when a collision is continuing, or when a collision ends, and then it'll link the thing together. So the main um, so there is the bounding volume, so the, the level recovery trigger, and it affects, it affects the main character, and so on. So that's basically how these triggers work. And we got a number of different triggers defined for all these various different animations in the world. Um, and that's kind of how you link the game logic back to the entity. And yeah, essentially that is it to start. And now, uh, again, it is an early concept at this point in time. The engine itself works pretty well. Uh, you can bring in your objects, uh, it just import them into your world. Um, those are available via the menu right here. So you can import in uh, various different graphics formats. So you see here we've got DAE object and FBX. That's how you populate your world with stuff. Uh, so for example, there's an elevator right here. Right there. So this is an elevator. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And it should sync up. I mean, I thought it automatically picked over here, but here's your elevator right there. So this elevator, you'll notice .fbx. This is just a, a, an FBX file that was imported. And then you put a trigger on it, like here, ball catcher is one of the triggers, so that when the ball rolls into here, that trigger will fire, for example. You can have multiple different triggers in here. So here's a mechanism trigger that you would use to cause the elevator to go up and down, and then you play off the animations and so on. So if you're an artist and you don't want to get into the world of coding, uh, this is a very straightforward and clean engine. Now, it would be interesting to see in time uh, what kind of functionality actually gets added to it. I've got a couple of the details from the developers themselves. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, the intention is that it's going to be free. Eventually, they will add ad support in there. Uh, the alpha is free for everyone. Monetization plans will be announced later, perhaps months later. Uh, it's all about you know getting the features of functionality in right now. Um, they have really asking for uh, user feedback to see where this is driven towards. Uh, editor is Windows and Linux. Sorry, Windows and Mac only. Linux is not supported. No ETA on when it will be. The lowest spec they targeted, and this is actually kind of impressive. The lowest spec machine is an Intel Atom. Uh, so you could potentially run this on a GPD Win, like one of those mini computer things that you can buy, uh, or an eight-year-old MacBook Pro with discrete GPU. Uh, ideally, you can have better, but it doesn't really demand a whole lot to run this engine. Um, it's right now, again, it's very optimized towards the idea of, um, you know, creating a platform style game. You're going to notice certain objects, uh, in the scene. So for example, if I scroll all the way to down here, we've got gravity. If you've got gravity, you've got properties for how gravity will affect sky settings. You got settings specific there. We're going here. We've got the camera. 
and then if you've got the camera select, you come in here and do things like post-processing effects, depth of bloom, uh, um, chromatic ab aberration, and so on. So there are going to be more and more objects added, and that will add more flexibility and functionality. The engine itself was designed using C++, C Sharp, and the Qt frameworks, but the entire thing is designed to be uh, a no-code approach. So they're, they're really going with this triggers and animation combination. That's obviously going to limit what it is ultimately capable of, but it also is going to make it a lot more accessible, especially to artists that want to showcase their work or don't necessarily want to work with a programmer, but are making a game type that is compatible with what Emanu is all about. Um, there's a lot of limitations on the zero day. Uh, there's a lot of things that were actually stripped out. There's a UI editor, level map editor, the ability to publish your maps and so on. Uh, so again, this is very early preview. So do be aware of that. Uh, there's also a couple of limitations on bringing in objects. So you can import any valid FBX, OBJ, or DAE or Collada file. Um, better not to use skinning and bones right now. Those features of functionality are coming more over time. Textures um, can be brought in automatically. JPEG and ping are the supported formats for now. Um, normal maps are supported, ambient occlusion, glossiness, emissions, uh, uh, check the shader tab to select complete, to complex shaders uh, with all the maps, and lighting is based off the sun, the sky, lamps, and emissive materials uh, that you've brought in. Uh, so yeah, that is kind of the idea here. You'll notice when I have the camera selected, I can I obviously set the the view of it. It's an interesting project. I definitely will be keeping an eye on it. If you're interested in checking it out yourself, you'll see here there is a countdown. This is coming uh, live on March the 31st. Uh, so in a day, at least as of relative to when I recorded this, it's available at manu, M-A-N-U dot C-O. Uh, I will link that down below. Um, you are going to be only able to get it from their website. You go here and sign up. Uh, they will be emailing out the relevant information to people that uh, get in. I don't know if they're going to be letting everyone in because, uh, again, this is an alpha release at this point. Um, you'll even notice sometimes in the background or some screenshots you'll see there's some features and functionality that were previewed in the past that are currently stripped out so it is very very bare bones at the moment it is very much set up and optimized towards platformer style games and if you're looking at it, it's like oh i can't make this work yeah you're probably right but maybe in time you will be able to and if you're interested if, if you like the look of a very streamlined minimalist style game like this game engine like this uh that again is designed towards um a no code type approach. Uh, do consider checking out the alpha. They're, they're looking for your feedback. Maybe this can shape into the perfect kind of project for you. At some point, they are going to be adding the you know the ability to put in ads and monetization and all that stuff, so you can publish and make money off this. Uh, but that is quite a ways down the road. So if you're looking at shipping a game tomorrow, Manu is not the engine for you. But um, if you're you know looking for something to grow up with, uh, Manu definitely is worth checking out. All right, that's it for now. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.